Hi, I'm Elizabeth at A Literary Princess, and today we are talking about the 10 characters in Victorian literature who I hate. Like, hate so much. So, I want to make it clear, these are not necessarily villains, and actually I'm pretty sure out of all of these, like technically one is only an actual villain, maybe two. Because like, you know what, a lot of villains, I actually really enjoy them as characters. These are characters who I'm like, I can't stand you, I detest you. And I'm sure those of you who have been here a while already know who the top two are because I've talked about them before. But let's talk about all of them. So we are going to start with number 10 and then go up to my top most hated. And I will say the ones toward the bottom are more ones, they just irritate me. And I think some of these opinions aren't going to be very popular, <laughs> particularly the one sitting in number 10. But I, I can't stand these people. There's also a very heavy gender bias here. Um, they're all men except for one. We have one woman on here. So make of that what you will. And there's also a lot of George Eliot characters. <laughs> yeah. Let's jump in and we'll talk about it. First up in spot number 10. So he just, I don't hate him, hate him, but he irritates me a lot. And this is Fred Vinci from Middlemarch. And I think this is the one that people are going to be like, wait, really? He's harmless. I'm like, yes, he's harmless. But also he's so damn useless useless man-child. And I know, like, he kind of gets it together at the end. I don't care. He's not good enough for Mary Garth, okay? Mary should have married, um, what's his name? I can't even remember his name, but he was ultimately much better than frigging Fred. Fred just was not good enough for her. At all. I'm sorry. He just, uh, like floating in the wind, not sure what's, what he's going to do. Uh, no, get your shit together. And yes, he does at the end, but I don't care. I don't care. He was not good enough for my girl, Mary Garth. And he irritated me throughout this whole behemoth of a book. <laughs> so he gets spot number 10. Is he ultimately harmless? Yes. Do I care? No. In spot number nine is another George Eliot character, and this is Godfrey Cass. Again, ultimately fairly harmless, but oh, he pisses me off. Okay, so Godfrey Cass, and there's gonna be spoilers, by the way, throughout this whole video for all of these books, I'm sorry, but I can't talk about how much I hate some of these people without giving the whole book away. <laughs> So Godfrey Cass has a secret marriage to a woman of a lower class, and they have a child together. And when his wife is found frozen, frozen, outside, and dead, and the child has just, is there, and has wandered into this random guy's house, title character Silas Marner, like, you would expect Godfrey to be like, Hi, she's mine. Okay, sorry. I'll take her. I fucked up. No, <laughs> this man is just like, mm, I'm not gonna say anything. So his daughter gets raised by Silas Marner. The daughter is named Epi. And then this man, this man and his absolute audacity. <sighs> Once Epi is grown up, he finally reveals to his wife, Nancy, his new wife, Nancy, who he then marries after the death of the first wife. Like, she's my daughter, and yeah, all this happened, because they haven't been able to have children. So they're like, well, we'll go, we'll, 
you know, we'll go, we'll take her in now. She can be our child. And they go to Silas and Epi and tell them. And they're like, just fully expecting Epi to go with them. No. And he has the audacity to think that Silas is being selfish because Silas doesn't want to give up Epi, the child that he has raised for over 10 years. The absolute audacity of this man. And like, you know, he ultimately accepts that Epi doesn't want to go live with him and that he's not her father. But like, oh, he, he just makes me so angry oh, when he when he's thinking that Silas is being rather selfish about the whole thing. I was like, I can think of someone else who's selfish. You. Mm. Makes me so angry. Why? Why does Elliot have so many useless characters? We've we've got we've got two more Elliot characters in here. But yes, is Godfrey ultimately harmless? Probably. Does he learn his lesson? Yes. I still hate him. He makes me very angry. Sitting at number eight is Sinjin Rivers from Jane Eyre. This man this man. He is such a jerk. Like, he wants Jane to marry him. She doesn't love him. He doesn't love her. And he's like, well, you're not made for love. You're made for, like, work. Screw you, dude! Screw you! And also, he's just such a... Ugh. Like, he's bossy. Like, he's just like, give up your study of German and now you're going to learn Hindustani with me. Like, doesn't even ask Jane's opinion, really. He's just like always ordering her about, like, you're going to marry me. I'm like, no, no. And he's just so convinced that he like needs to go to India to be a missionary, even though his sisters are like, please don't go. We love you. We need you here. It's like... He's just, he's self-righteous, he's bossy, he's inconsiderate, and he gets the last line of the book and that makes me angry. I'm like, no, why are we ending with you? I hate you. Ugh. He's just, he's gross. Honestly, he's gross and I don't like him. I don't think anyone likes him. I don't think you're supposed to like him. I don't think anyway. I don't know. I don't know what Charlotte was doing sometimes, but he's just, ugh, he's just gross. I don't like him. Yuck. Seven and six are actually from the same book, so we'll kind of talk about them together. This is East Lynn by Ellen Wood. It's a sensation novel um, following Lady Isabella, Isabel? Lady Isabel. Um, as she gets married to Archibald Carlyle. And then she ends up running off with another man because she becomes convinced that her husband doesn't actually want to be with her. So for number seven is the only female character, and this is Barbara Hare. So Barbara Hare is this girl who has grown up near Archibald Carlyle and who is in love with him. And she's just so obnoxious. Okay, once he brings home Isabel, she <sighs> she is just irritating. She is very upset because she's in love with him and wanted to marry him. And she's just, uh, she's always like kind of hanging off of him. And always, she's got this brother who has been accused of a crime he didn't commit. So she's always pulling Archibald aside to try to get him to help somehow. And it's just so clear that she is kind of purposefully just inserting herself and trying to put herself between Isabel and Archibald. And I'm like, I just don't like her. I don't like her at all. All. I don't think we're supposed to dislike her because 
once Archibald believes Isabel is dead, he ultimately marries Barbara, which just made me even angrier, to be honest. <laughs> I think we're supposed to see her as a good person. She pissed me off so much. I was like, girl, stop. He is married. Leave him alone. Stop moping. Stop being annoying. Go away. And then in number six is Archibald himself, who also sucks because he just completely doesn't see that Isabel is uncomfortable with him constantly just going off and talking privately with Barbara, which is inappropriate in the Victorian era. Inappropriate. Not okay. And also, he lets his sister bully Isabel so badly, and he does nothing about it. And I'm like, you are a useless man. Useless, useless man. Mm. Don't like him. I don't like either of them. I feel like this this discussion of these two is a bit more vague because I haven't read this book in a while. But like my reaction to them was so strong of just I hate both of them that they had to be on this list and they had to be higher up than Fred or Godfrey or Sinjin because God, they both suck. Seeing at number five is George Osborne from Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. And actually, I have Kate Howe to thank for reminding me of this guy's existence because I hated him so much that I had, like, blocked him out of existence. George Osborne is just a jerk. <laughs> and he is so unappreciative of his wife, Amelia, who is lovely. And he just does what he wants. I'm pretty sure he's unfaithful to her. I can't quite remember. It's been a while since I read this too. But he is not a good guy. And what really, really makes me angry is that Amelia just fawns over him constantly. And I'm like, no, he sucks. And you have Captain Dobbin right there, who is amazing. And Captain Dobbin is like trying to preserve Amelia's image of George as this perfect guy. And he's just not. He's awful and useless. That's a running theme. Like a lot of these guys are just useless. <laughs> but I really hated him. And I'm like, Captain Dobbin is right there, Amelia. Right there. I guess the, the good thing is that George dies partway through. But then you still have to deal with Amelia. Like, oh, George was so wonderful. No. No. Mm-mm. All right. Sitting at number four is another Elliot character. Stephen Guest from The Mill on the Floss. I can't stand this man. So, and I didn't realize I hated him in, so much until the third time reading it. But this past time I reread it, I was like, wow, you are awful. So he is almost engaged to Lucy Dean, who is the main character Maggie Tulliver's cousin. He has not actually spoken to Lucy and proposed. However, he has been going to their house, paying lots of attention to her. Like, as far as most people concer are concerned, they're engaged. It's just not official. And then Maggie comes to visit, and he starts to catch feelings for Maggie. And he ends up getting Maggie alone on a boat. And they were just supposed to go on a little day trip down the river and back. And he purposefully goes past the spot there they were going to stop at without saying anything and basically just kidnaps her and is like, let's run away together. Again, the audacity. He kidnaps her. And then she's finally like, no, 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 I'm going home. Because he's like, let's go get married. And she's like, I can't do that to Lucy. And he's like, it's fine. Screw you. No, it's not fine. 
So, but when she goes home, everybody knows they've gone off together and then she's not married. So she's a fallen woman. As if this is somehow her fault. And does anybody blame Stephen? Guest? No, nobody blames him. And you know what? He ends up marrying Lucy. This man gets off with no consequences. Maggie suffers. Maggie dies at the end of this book. And he just gets to marry the girl he was originally supposed to marry and live his life with no problems. No, screw you, dude. Uh-uh. Hate him. You don't get to kidnap women trying to make them elope with you after being basically engaged to her cousin. And then just live your life happily with no consequences of it. No. No. And I am not going to be putting this book on the stack. I'm going to be putting it back down because there is another character in here who we will be talking about. Number three is another George Eliot character. I don't know why she just has such awful characters who I really don't like. <laughs> Tito from Romola which is apparently the correct way of pronouncing it, according to Kate Howe. I have been pronouncing it wrong for ages. Anyway, Tito. If you've read this book, you know what I'm going to say. So Tito is an outsider who comes to Florence and ends up marrying Romola. Romola? Now I can't remember the correct pronunciation. Anyway, he marries her. Romola has this father who is like a blind scholar and she has been helping him in his library, collecting these books and doing all this stuff with him. And her father ends up dying. And Tito sells the library. Like, it was the one thing that Romola's father wanted was for this library to stay intact and be kept with them. And this man, this man sells it in pieces to multiple different people. And, and Romola's super upset about it. And he's like, eh, it's fine. No, no. And then, then, as if that's not bad enough, because that's pretty bad. Like if somebody sold my library, you wouldn't find them ever again. Anyway, but no, this man's not done yet. He's married to Rola. This man goes out and starts having an affair with this peasant girl who he tricks into thinking they are married. He has a whole second life with her, with multiple children. Even George Eliot hated this guy. This is the one person on here that I really think is a villain. Like the rest of these are not villains or they're not supposed to be. But this guy, evil, George Eliot celebrated when she finally killed him off. Yeah, he does die. Thank God. He's also in involved with a bunch of shady political stuff that I don't really understand because I'm not into the politics of 14th century Florence, personally. But the library and the whole second family was enough for me to be like, you gotta go. You've gotta go. Mm -mm. Tito awful person. Mm. You might be thinking, oh my god, how can we top that? Mm. Well, <laughs> we've got another George Elliott character from The Mill on the Flaws, and that is Tom Tulliver, Maggie Tulliver's older brother. He is such a snot. I hate him so much. I have hated him since I was 14 years old. And Maggie has this really good quote that sums up everything that is wrong with this man. 
you were in fault ever, if you had done anything very wrong, I should be sorry for the pain it brought you. I should not want punishment to be heaped on you. But you have always enjoyed punishing me. You have always been hard and cruel to me, even when I was a little girl and always loved you better than anyone else in the world. You would let me go crying to bed without forgiving me. You have no pity. You have no sense of your own imperfection and your own sins. It is a sin to be hard. It is not fitting for the a mortal for a Christian. You are nothing but a Pharisee. You thank God for the for nothing but your own virtues. You think they are great enough to win you everything else. You have not even a vision of feelings by the side of which your shining virtues are mere darkness. Yes, girl. He's such a jerk. He's so convinced he's always in the right. Again, self-righteous. He's always right, Maggie's always wrong, and, and that's that. And he can punish her or do whatever, and he's still in the right. Even when he screws up, even when he's being a jerk, which is literally all the time, nope, he's right. He's always right. <sighs> she goes to him after the whole stuff with Stephen Guest, and he's like, no, I can't. You're not welcome in my house. The audacity. And he, Maggie still goes back to save him in the flood. She has done nothing but love Tom through the entire book. And he's just so mean to her all the time. Constantly berating her. Oh my God. I hate him. I've hated him since I was a child. And I will hate him forever. Mm. Now, number one. I think a lot of you know where this is going. Angel Claire from Tess of the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy. <sighs> Self-righteous. <laughs> Hypocrite. Awful. So, he falls in love with Tess while they are both working at, I think it's a dairy, but he falls in love with basically an ideal. Like he builds her up in his head as this paragon of virtue and perfection, who's so innocent and sweet and wonderful. And she is, she is, but he didn't really know her at all because Tess was sexually assaulted by an upper class man and she had a child from that who died but angel doesn't know any of this until their wedding night they get married and he confesses to her that he once had an affair with a woman and she's like oh then i can tell you my big secret because you understand and it won't make you hate me and she tells him that she was sexually assaulted. And this man is like, you're not who I thought you were. I can't look at you. We have to separate. <sighs> Hypocritical, self-righteous dick. I hate him more than I hate Alec Durberville, the man that sexually assaults Tess who sucks as well. He is awful. He is a horrible person. I hate Angel Claire more because Angel Claire is supposed to be better than that. And he just isn't. And Tess like doesn't even hate him for it. She's yeah, you know, like they, this man, this man, I hate him so much. And again, I have hated him since I was a kid. I read this at 15. And I was like, this man is the worst person in the whole world of literature. Oh, I hate him so much. And I think a lot of people feel this way. I don't think Hardy meant for us to feel quite this way. Because I think Hardy is trying to convey him as somewhat sympathetic. And I'm like, 
Angel Claire can burn in a fire. And I would laugh. So, yeah. <laughs> Those are my 10 most hated Victorian characters. And like, honestly, Angel Claire and Tom Tulliver, they are my most hated characters in literature. Not just Victorian literature, literature as a whole. So let me know down in the comments below, how do you feel about these characters? Are there ones who you think we are supposed to hate or ones that you're like, no, no, Elizabeth, you're definitely not supposed to feel that angry at them. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Who are your most hated characters in Victorian literature? It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.